Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel, welcome to my new subscribers and welcome and good morning or good afternoon wherever you are to at my long term subscribers, it's lovely to have you on board. I've, I'm popping by to follow on from my Facebook Live yesterday. I did a Facebook Live and then I posted the Facebook Live to YouTube which you'll find um, below the video I'm, I'm, I've, I'm uploading now with this one. I will try and remember to add a link to the description to the previous video. But before I actually start on another card, I had a question uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, I, um, as most of you know, I do online workshops and a couple of ladies have said to me, you know, why bother doing workshops because you put everything free on YouTube? which is a fair point, you know, there's lots of designers out there that put a lot of content on YouTube. Now, what I like to think is that with my workshops, I go into a lot more detail and I also give a lot more content as well than I do on YouTube. So obviously make it worth your while doing a workshop. So for instance, I've got a workshop that is called Delight in Stencils and it's workshop 91. And in that workshop, you create loads of backgrounds with my stencils, but you can use any stencils, any stencils that you wish. And I believe that I go into a lot of detail and I give a lot of content for a workshop. So this workshop, the Delight in Stencils, is already pre-recorded. And if I just show you where we can go into the group, let me just see. So if I use the app, because then most of you will know. Come on, Tracy. So if I go to Facebook and I've got Tracy Evans, which is my own personal profile. And then I've got my group because I've got uh, the maximum amount of friends I can have on my personal profile. So I started a group, Tracy Evans, Craft Addicts, Create, Share and Inspire. And we can sh we share all, all our artwork with my designs and stencils. As long as my design is the main focal image, you can use any stencils or sentiments in the background. If you go to albums and I click down and I just scroll down, you'll come to one album that says online workshops available to purchase. You click on that and I've got all my workshops in here. And for instance, let's go to the one I've just been talking about. The one with the stencils is here. So you click on the workshop. It should. And it gives you a description. So it's packed with content and techniques for using your stencils. It's pre-recorded and it's £35. Now, I personally feel that they are excellent value because there's also, you know, workshops for every budget. For instance, let's go to this one. This is a journal page and this is, for instance, it's one journal page and it's £8.50 and it's called Circle of Life and I loved creating that. So there's something for everybody's budget. And then another one is another journal page and this one goes into great detail and it's a journal page and I think there's a card in there as well and this is £20. So there's lots of different budgets to suit everybody. Also, when you book a workshop, obviously you're supporting the artist. Um, and obviously that's the way they make their living. Um, so I wanted to answer those two questions. I wanted to answer those questions from the ladies because I think it's important. If somebody asks me a question, I like to respond. So for me, I give a lot more content in a workshop Obviously, you know, you can look back on that as many times as you wish and you can download that content onto your device, onto your computer, and then you can watch that at any time. So, for instance, in the stencil workshop, we've got all these backgrounds that we create. Let me just lift these up. So we just bring these like so. Of course, it's going to take me ages to turn the pages now. And you create all these techniques in one workshop and we go through lots of ideas as well with the workshop 
lots of techniques and lots of ideas. And I just think it's it's important just to answer the questions that, that I'm asked and just that, you know, I'm open and honest regarding the workshops. You can ask many of my uh, followers who've done workshops, if you join the group, you can ask them what they think of the workshops and they will give you an honest opinion. So you create all these backgrounds in this workshop, this one workshop. So you create them all. So it is quite a lot of content in there. And these particular ones are using my stencils. Obviously you don't have to use my stencils. You can use whichever products you, you know, make you happy. Right, I'm going to shuffle now and try and get in a comfortable position, which is me all over. And what I'm going to do is just follow on from yesterday's live. Now, I did a Facebook Live yesterday and it was to create this project. And I created this live on Facebook and then uploaded it to YouTube. And I'm absolutely delighted with the outcome. I absolutely love it. It's just wonderful now i had a spare background i did in exactly the same way as i've done on the facebook live because i had one pre-done that was dry now this is the one i did live and it's dry and what i wanted to do because i like to give as much information as possible what i've just realized is i haven't cut a card blank but i'm sure you won't mind me cutting a card blank live so what I'm going to do is I'm using the VersaFine Claire Warm Breeze. Now that's a permanent ink. I went over with this with Distress Ink and then talked about the Distress Oxide because that's a pigment dye fusion. When you use the Distress Ink, obviously you've got acrylic paints underneath there and Distress Inks, the acrylic paints have got a bit of plastic in there. So the Distress Ink will sort of when you wipe it off you can wipe some of the distress ink back off again because obviously it reacts to moisture so it's just important that i go through reasons why and what you can do in other ways you can also go around this with paint so that, that you add a black layer of paint if you wish and then just wipe off from here but I wanted to show a nice quick way with the distress inks and the distress oxides and the differences between them the distress ink um, doesn't give as much of a deep uh, layer of black the distress oxide gives a deeper layer because it's got that pigment element but you need to remember because that pigment element has been put on a, a paint layer you need to dry that right so what I thought was we've got the same background here what happens if I go over with a permanent ink? So this is Warm Breeze VersaFine Claire. So I'm going to do exactly the same as I did in my Facebook Live. But what I'm going to do is go over with a permanent ink pad. And obviously I'm going over with a colour that's not jet black. So it's going to look completely different. Or I hope it's going to look completely different. And the idea is here, when I'm doing my YouTube videos... I need to say that just because I do YouTube videos doesn't mean I'm always right. What I'm doing is I'm sharing my YouTube videos, my knowledge, mistakes, warts and all of how I create my projects. And the idea is that together we learn from the mistakes and from the successes together. Right, so what I've got here is I've now got that all covered. Let's just wipe. Now. So I'm not going to use a wipe. I want to do it exactly the same way as I did with the live. And I'm just going to use a little bit of water on my kitchen roll. And I'm just going to rub over the this is almost dry, this is. I'm just going to rub over with a wipe. 
Now, because you've got that permanent ink, obviously, if I dried it, it'd be totally permanent, which I'm going to dry anyway. But it just gives a totally different look. And I think it's important that we show, obviously, the permanent ink is not going to react with the moisture that I'm using with the wipe or the water. Now, what I'd say is, when you're using a permanent ink, you need to be a little bit quicker removing the ink from the glossy area. Now, obviously, the black gives more of a contrast to your project. It gives more of a contrast. But let's just give this... So what I'm doing is I'm just cleaning my card up now just so that you can see but can you see you can still see the colour through even though I've used that permanent ink on there so it's interesting to see how different looks that you get so I can go in and let's see then if I can add a little bit more depth of colour and it's interesting because what I think you need to do, let's just build this and then don't touch because do you know what I've always said to you? Remember when I always stamp onto an acrylic paint background and I always say to you that you need to dry it because obviously it's a slick surface. So if I dry this now, let's just... Let's get my heat tool. So if we dry this now, let's just move the blue off there. And what I'm doing is I'm just moving it off the actual birds. And then I want to just dry. And it comes off because it's obviously a slick surface. You're using that permanent ink which we know the VersaFine Clairs are permanent, but obviously if you use them on a slick surface, because they're meant for a, you know an absorbent surface. Let's now give this a dry. And sometimes I think also YouTube needs to be a place where we also experiment and we make mistakes and journeys together. Let's just, right, let's dry this now. So far with using the distress inks, obviously they will always react. And what I'm doing here is using a permanent ink and I've added a layer of ink. I added an extra layer of ink. And what I'm doing now is drying it, which means that if I dry it, it shouldn't move then with the baby wipe or the kitchen towel. So we should be able to then just wipe right over and the ink only comes off the glossy area because it's permanent and I've dried it. So what that means is you can go over now and you can add another layer of the blue to make it much richer much darker dry it and it's it's permanent obviously it isn't you know it, it doesn't dry on its own because of that paint layer and as i've said many times before the paint layer is not absorbent so therefore the face of fine clair just sits on top of the card so we need to dry it. But before we dry it, we're just going to clean up our little textured areas. Just clean them up. Just use your finger just to clean them up. Just so they become more vibrant. And again, the VersaFine Claire won't dry on there 
because it's not an absorbent surface. So let's just, so just clean up your little glossy areas. There we go. Just clean them up. There we go. And then I'm going to, let's just make sure them little birdies, I don't know whether I went over them or not. There we go. And then just give that a dry. Just to make that permanent. Just clean those leaves up. There we go. That's it. Now we've made that, let me just move this out of the way. We've now made that more permanent with the blue. But obviously, I think the black pops more for me. I think the colour pops a little more when it's black, personally. I just think the colours pop. Because what happens is, with the blue, obviously, if you've got blue in the background, then it doesn't pop as much. But it gives you a different look. And if I rub over now like so, to polish it. The colour in the background doesn't move. And I think it's important that we go through these processes just so that we know, because obviously distress moves, whereas a permanent ink pad doesn't. Therefore, if you want to, I'm quite happy with my distress. I absolutely love it. But what you can do is you can go over it with your Nocturne Black over this and then to have it permanent. I quite like the fact that I can see little areas through. For me, I love that effect, it just appeals. But I never waste a background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a polish. Just polish this up just so that we've got that shine, just so that you can see the colours, which just looks lovely. Now, what I like is I like this pink against it. So what I'm going to do, let's have a look at some of the flowers. See how they would look take that off there and I can just add I'm not going to stamp onto this because obviously you can't because of the texture but a flower on there is going to look rather nice especially if maybe I colour it in the pink to bring out that pink did we put the acrylic box back oh we did so I often find also YouTube is a good t place to experiment, not to always show perfection all the time, because that's not what demoing's about. It's not about showing perfection all the time. It, it's showing different ideas as well. Right, let's grab a piece of card. And together we can put this on a card mat and layer, which we'll cut live. Now this was five by five inches, just so that you know that. And we actually used my stencil undergrowth 162 for the background, just in case you haven't watched the previous video. What I'm going to do whilst we're here, so they can be drying, is I'm going to use my Posca pen just to add some of those white splatters. And those white splatters just bring a nice pop. 
And when we add it to a white mat, you'll also find that that pops beautifully as well. Right. Let's stamp this in our black. Have I got a big enough piece of card? Oh, yes. I only want the flower. Just going to use the flower, the actual flower on its own. And this is the Aster flower that comes from my Bright Dawn stamp set 925. And this is available from the stockists on Monday, the 29th of May. And you can also still get this from Create and Craft. Right, let's just give that a wipe. And let's just stamp that. I'm only stamping it slanted just so that I can fit that stamp on. And as always, I'm just allowing that ink just to grab a hold and settle in there. Just giving that time just to soak into the card. Now, this is plain white card. So what happens is this is absorbent. It's, it, yes, it's a smooth card, but it's got some absorbency. So because of that, I only need to blot and sometimes I don't need to dry with the heat tool. But when I'm using acrylic paints, obviously that's got a bit of plastic in it, like a plasticky surface. So therefore, you, you need to dry. So you just need to remember these things. And it's only through experimentation and why things didn't work that you realise these facts. So what I'm going to do is, let's cut this out. Now, I haven't got the flower cut out because sometimes when I decide to go on to YouTube, I sort of decide at the last minute. I don't. It's not something I always pre-plan. It's just, it's like you. It's just where the mood takes me. So let's just cut these out. So when I'm cutting out and you see me cutting out, you can fast forward that if you wish. You can fast forward the process of me cutting out. But also me cutting out gives me the opportunity just to just to have a little chat with you. The weather's beautiful again today. It's a little bit cooler, which being a redhead, I have to say, I actually prefer. That's only because, you know, I'm, I'm not one of these people that can sunbathe and sit out in the garden and just sunbathe. My daughter can, but... I can't, but then she isn't a redhead. I often find if I get too hot, I just find it a little bit overwhelming. But it's lovely when it's just like today. It's a little bit cooler and I get time to garden. And it's funny, the other day I was out gardening. And I know sometimes I'm a little bit strange, but some I was looking at some of the flowers quite closely actually sort of nipping off a few flower heads and you know it's quite surprising how many flowers have ha actually got a similar shape you know it, it I was quite surprised um you know you, you've got a lot of flower varieties but quite a few have got a similar similar shape to them now, this is why when I say to you, you need to blot your image. So I'm cutting out here, but I'm, le I'm not touching this. But the minute, like I'm touching that A there, I'm not touching the flower. You can see that you get some of the black off there. That's because you're using an ink with a good open time. So what you should do is just give it, a, it doesn't matter about that because I'm not going to use that. Just give your flower head a little bit of a dry because the last thing you want to do 
is do your cutting out and then you know sort of smudge something i tend to find that i don't smudge because i just keep my fingers away from the card and when i'm cutting i tend to move the card rather than my scissors and i will also repeat a question uh, that i was asked pauline asked about these scissors so i'm using pergamano scissors they're slightly curved uh, nail scissors work as well but i like the slight curve now um pauline asked if they cut right to the tip these do cut right to the tip but you'll find i don't actually use the tip of the scissors i sort of use the inner bit i don't go right to the point as I'm turning that around, I don't go right to the, the point of the scissors. I also find, you know, because it's, it's my YouTube channel, I can take the opportunity to answer questions and just take my time. I mean, I must be fair, there's, there's not much that I rush anyway. I don't like to rush the process. Now, if the long videos are not your cup of tea and you don't like the waffling and you want to avoid that, I do have a lot of videos called snippets. And the snippets are where I take 15 minutes to create a project, part of a project or whatever, just in those 15 minutes. For those of you that have got short slots of time, to create something but you still want to create something of some quality and then with the snippets you can either go back and add to them i'm adding mine to a journal or you can just leave them as they are and it's a good reference because i'm adding mine to a black journal to just look back on those because if you're struggling for a card idea they give you those ideas that then you can then expand on so they work quite nicely so just trying to offer as much variety as possible for you know lots of different personalities tastes etc you know art creating or whatever is very subjective so as a demonstrator it's sometimes difficult to cater for everybody. Well, you, you can't cater for everybody. It's not going to be to everybody's taste. So I'm just cutting out. I don't need that leaf. I'm just going to cut these out. Just all the way down. There we go. That's it. So let's move those bits of paper now. And what I tend to do when I've cut something out, I just sort of manipulate it just so that we can just, and then I always give my hands a little bit of a clean, just in case I've picked up any of that black ink. And then I wipe them on my trousers, which is not a good idea. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim down that stem. That's better because it's only a five by five inch card blank. So now you can keep it white if you want, but I'm going to add the touches of pink. And I want a really sort of nice vibrant pink. I'm knocking everything all over the floor. Let's see what we've got. Now, I don't know whether you're like me, that you've got that many colouring mediums. Sometimes you don't know what to use. So I end up sort of dithering. I don't think that's the right pink, is it? So what I'm going to do, let's grab these. Let's grab... We want a nice pop of pink. I could use the paint, stoked, that I used in the background. But I've also got, 
You see, if you look at these, you can see whether you've got a pink that's going to, to work. Let's see if I've got just a little bit darker. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to colour it with my Posca pen. Just to add some nice bright colour just with that Posca pen. And I'll just before that dries, let's just I will see if these Posca pens have got colours on them or you know some kind of label. Oh yes, there we go. So what I can do is I can use my finger to blend the colours, which is rather nice. Right, let me see if it's got a colour. That one is, this is just a thin one, 0 0.7 millimetres. Do you give me a colour? Pink, that's literally called pink. That's nice and easy. This is called fuchsia, I think that's meant to say. Fusion, fuchsia, fuchsia, that's meant to say. So that's like a fuchsia colour. And what I can do is just add a little bit of the darker colour. And while it's wet, I can just smudge that colour with my finger. Perfect. So then I can go to the others. But what I'm doing as I'm working whilst the Posca pen is still wet. So I'm just doing a little bit at a time, just taking my time, then I can just smudge that colour and then go in with a little bit more of the pink, you know, and why not use what you've got? So I'm just going to add a little bit of the pink. So just with the Posca pens, I'm just making sure that I get the blend whilst the pens are wet. Plus they're quite a nice bright colour, so it works rather well. And the Poscas are opaque, so that also works quite well as well. Just a little touch of the dark. With the little one, you don't really need to do too much. And just add a little bit of the pink. So you can layer the colours over each other. Let's just add a little bit of pink here. And what I'm going to do is just add, I might add some splatters with those as well, so it echoes with the flower. And it comes off your finger nice and easily. So let's grab a white gel pen and let's just add a little bit of the white. Just add some white over the top with the gel pen, just to give a little bit more vibrancy just to that design. The pops of white just, just help. And what I'm going to do is, let's see if we can get some splatters from this little one, because that will add some of the pink splatters. Oh yes, that splatters rather nicely. And you know why that is, is because I'm using, I'm holding the end of the pen and I've pumped the pen as well. Let's have some of the darker ones. Oh yes, nice bit of splatter there. And obviously really, if you've got any sense, you then don't go in and try and play with the card, which is what I tend to do. I'm going to add a little bit more white.
And then obviously when that's dry, I can add this sort of pop of pink here. I'm just going to give that a few seconds to dry. And then I'm going to, let's use the, where's the stencil? There it is. Let's use the stencil that's got the same beads on there. So we'll take that stencil, grab a piece of card again, and I'm just giving that Posca pen just sat some time to dry. So what I'm going to do first is let's grab the Bulb Gazette stamp, which I'm sure is still, oh no, it's, it's not still out. So the Bulb Gazette stamp, stamp set 907. And what I'm going to do is just stamp some text. Now, do I want that in the black? Yes, let's go and yes, no, yes. Right, what we're going to do is decide which beard I want. So this is going to go on here. And obviously, I don't want too big a bird. So which way do I want him facing? Do I want him facing that way? Or do I want him facing that way? So you can have him facing whichever way you wish. Let's have, oh, do you know, talk about faffing. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to take some of the colours that are in the background. So... Let's grab our cut and dry foam again. Take a little bit of the turquoise paint, exactly like we did in the previous Facebook Live, and just add some dabs of the blue. I'm just going over them both because I can't decide. Keep the stencil in place. I'm then going to add some touches of the pink. So that was turquoise and this is called Stoked by Dina Wakely. Just again work that into your cut and dry foam. And just Blend, keep blending the colour like we did in the background. I'm then going to use the gnarly, which is the yellowy colour, sort of fluorescence. I've only just washed these out. I knew I'd do this again. Yellow is, any yellowy colour is lovely just to add some vibrancy to the design. Let's just lift that up. Oh, that's nice. So it just adds some vibrancy to the design. So because I'm cutting them out, I don't need to lose the, keep the stencil over the top. Let's just give that a wipe. But doesn't that look lovely? Just like that. If you had just created a card like that with just the birds on, a little sentiment here, a little notelet to a friend, completed. And it, it works really nicely. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to use black now I've done that. I'm going to use Morning Mist. And I, I don't need to worry about going over the edges because I'm cutting these out. So I'm using the Morning Mist on my Bulb Gazette stamp. And just add a little bit of stamping to the background. I'm not being funny though, that's a notelet in itself. That is a notelet. Look at that. Doesn't that look lovely just as it is? Just with a little sentiment. Just looks brilliant. I might just do that again. Right. So I'm going to take the bird then. Really easy to cut out. Because you just follow the lines of the shading. Now, obviously, you've put paint on there. Now, you've seen how little paint that I, I actually put on the beard. It was hardly any paint at all. 
But what I want to show you, now the grey doesn't normally, it doesn't stay as wet as the black. I don't know whether I'm going to see this in the camera because the, the camera's trying to focus on my hand. That is still, even with that bit of paint, it's got a shine to it. So because it's got a shine to it, that means that it needs blotting because you've got that permanent ink that is meant to be used on an absorbent surface and it's not absorbent because I've added that layer of acrylic. So I'm just giving that a blot. Look, look at the paint, look at the ink that comes off there. It goes to show you how much ink lies on the surface of the acrylic. Now, if you blot, it takes some of the colour away and you get like a very subtle text on there. If you want it darker, take your ink and say, oh, you, you decide, well, that isn't quite dark enough, Tracy. And you want the darker ink on there. Don't blot it so that it removes some of the ink. Simply give it a dry with your heat tool. Just to dry that ink. And then you'll get a darker layer of ink. So just, oh, let's dry this one in case we end up using it. There we go. Is that still? That is still shiny there. But you have to realise these things. If you want to use your products, but you're using them not how they were specifically designed, like using the VersaFine Claire's on acrylic paint, You've got to follow certain, certain processes just to make sure that it's going to work for you. If you used an archival link, if you used an archival link, obviously that would dry very quickly, which it does. The only problem is the archival dries too quickly for picking up some of the detail on our stamps. Let's move those out of the way. I don't know whether I'm using the two or not just all right there we go so we can take our little flower and then we can see if our bird just can sit on the stem oh yes the bird can sit on the stem like so so what I'm going to do yes the Posca pen is dry like I did with the other card I'm just going to add some white cotton, some loose white cotton, just, and the, the, the white cotton sort of diffuses everything, sort of gives it, it sort of opens the design somehow, it just works. Right, I'm just going to get some more adhesive. go and then I'm going to adhere my flower so I'm just going to add some adhesive just down on the stem just so that that adheres now I'm not going to stick that flower because it's nice to have some of the flower not stuck down so that it's got movement and then just take this And then I can't squeeze it. There we go. So I'm just adding a dollop of pin flare. You can use your ultra thick gel medium. There we go. And let's just faff with this. So I can just give that the dimension. And then that's just caught just down there. And I'm leaving this loose because it just gives it some movement. I'm then going to add the little, little bird down here. Um, now, where were you? Was this the black? I don't know whether there's still any black on there. Let's add 
let's take the black Noctane and just add a little bit of black to the edge. There we go. You know me by now, I love a good faff. So I'm going to add that there. sometimes when I'm doing a long video I get carried away because another idea crops up so I end up doing just loads of different things there we go let's just make sure that hand is nice and clean then I want to make sure that the beard it's got some white on there as well. Along with the flower. And where's my... The one thing I want is probably not here. Is it? Oh, it is. And then... I'm going to use my garden she wrote just to grab the A for Asti I never put anything back while I'm creating it's no wonder I end up with stuff everywhere I love this alphabet well, you know I'm circle mad anyway. There we go. Put it back, Tracy. So I just need to wipe my fingers because I'm messing with that. So just take the A. to am I do I want it there or just tucked under I think I'm going to stick it there it's actually got the word Asta on there so just add a little bit of adhesive there so I'm just creating my cluster Now, I can add the word Asti as well, if I wish, just here. Let's see what that looks like. Let's grab our stamp set. I'm sure, did I have the word Asta on there? Yes, I did. Do you know, I have to question myself then. I look at the stamps so much that sometimes I lose track of what I've put on there, especially when you've designed it a while ago. Let's just grab that. This is on the Bright Dawn stamp set. So just bring that in just so you can see. That's here on the Bright Dawn stamp set. Somebody's had my scissors. Can always rely on one of my children having the scissors honestly let's just cut that out there we go just make that a bit smaller that's it and then i'm going to use my black posca pen which could be anywhere the amount of stuff i've got out I hope you do exactly the same. You end up with, you create one card and it looks like you've created, you know, 
70 cards. Just adding a bit of black Posca just to, around the edge. And I always sort of like to leave it, even if it's just a couple of seconds, just to give it time, just to dry a little bit. Let's wipe some of that surface. And then I'm going to add the word Asta there. It just pops a little bit. It's quite nice. Of course, I'll try and add it over cotton, which just adds to the complications because you've got that cotton texture under there. But I don't like to make things simple for myself. That's me all over. Right. Let's add that there. There we go. What I'm going to do is create my mats now. So just bear with me a second while I just kneel on the floor, which is what I do, just to create a card blank. So I know I've also been asked about how I do my card blanks. So let's include that as well. Not that there's much room here. So what I do first is I grab there's not much room here, a piece of A3 card and I measure eight and a quarter inches, which is around about the halfway mark for an A3. But I don't worry about it too much if it's not perfect because I'm going to cut it anyway. So I then fold my A3 and then I create my card blanks from the A3. And depending what you're cutting and how you cut it, Depends where the fold is. Oh, just not my iPad all over the place. So, what card on? So that's five by five. Let's make my card blank six by six. created my card blank and I know a lot of you you know but maybe outside and gardening or whatever but that doesn't matter because these videos are here for whenever you've got the time I'm just working on a clean piece of paper so this is where I think it starts to look more professional so I'm going to add this to a black mat just to echo the black in the card So let's just add that to that black mat. And I'm just working on the white paper just because it's just a bit cleaner. So yes, not quite popping enough yet because we want that white card blank to make it pop. So then I've got a white card blank that is six by six. So the mat is a quarter of an inch bigger, but the card blank goes up in a bigger increment. So that the card blank is six by six, just to give me a bigger white space, because the white space echoes the white, pops of white that are in the card itself. There we go. And then you can see that we've created a card, where's the other one, that looks different to this card. The blue makes the colours look different. Isn't that cool? It really does make them look different. But you've still got that lovely technique, it still works. 
just so you can see that it works beautifully okay so we've now got another card but I don't want to I don't want to finish it just yet I've just had a thought right I've got all these bits of card so I don't know what this measures you can see so I'm going to use this bit of card let's have a look what it measures no idea so what does this measure so it measures we don't want it that big so let's make it seven and what is seven by what so seven maybe by three and a half Okay, so you saw me create the card and then when I used the stencil I thought, oh, that's a nice idea. So I've just picked up a scrap of card and I've cut it to three and a half inches by seven. And what I'm going to do is distress those edges. Now, there are lots of people out there that say, please don't use scissors, you can cut your hands, use a paper distresser. Now... I don't have any problem, but I need to put that, you know, out there for safety reasons. Make sure that, you know, if you're going to use scissors to distress your edges, you use them carefully or you use your paper distressor tools. So I've now got my distressed edge. And what I'm going to do is bring that stencil in, which, as you will have guessed, I've lost. So we've got that stencil again which is our undergrowth stencil 162. Now let's just, where do I want that? Let, let me just, right, okay, we're going to have it there. Let's create something just like we did before. Very simple, right. Um, what you want to do is use your, low tack tape let's make it low tack let's just place that over there just so that it stays in one place just so that that doesn't move and I don't get any areas just around the stencil so that I literally just get the birds. So I'm just making sure that I don't catch the edges of the stencil. And let's just do what we did before. We're just spending time together. So what I'm going to do is in exactly the same way, I'm going to, not that you can see anything because Tracy's got so much product everywhere. I'm just going to use the turquoise like we did before. Pick up the turquoise and work that into your cut and dry foam so that it works like an ink pad. And then just, and because I've got that low tack tape down, I don't have to worry about getting an area I don't want. So let's just, let's just play and create a clean and simple card. Now with a clean and simple card, there's lots of white space. So let's clean that up, work clean. And we're going to use the stoked. So that was turquoise, this is stoked. And you can see I'm using tiny bits of colour. I'm not, I don't need much anyway. I mean, I'm using the tiniest part of the stencil. So just pick this, well, maybe a little bit more than that, Tracy, so you can actually see the colour. It's really a good idea, flower. So. Let's work that into the cut and dry foam and just add a little bit of that pink. Let's pick that up. And I'm just wiping the colours up because I don't want them to merge or blend or, you know, I want them to lay it on top. 
So I'm just going to take a little bit of the gnarly. And the gnarly I really love because it's got those yellow tones and it just lifts a project. Just really lifts it for me. It lifts a design. And you hardly need any colour. So let's... I'll just wipe that on my hand. That was hilarious. Hmm. Shall we just add... Let's add a little tiny bit of fuchsia. Let's make it look a little bit different than the first one we did. Just a tiny bit of fuchsia. Just a tiny bit. And you want the colours to layer, not merge. So we've got a tiny bit of fuchsia. You can tell I'm enjoying myself because I often faff a little bit more. You know when I'm enjoying myself. Now I know from using the colours that turquoise looks rather good on top of the fuchsia. It works really well. Just on top of the fuchsia. So now I want a bit more pink and you can see I've added a lot more layers to this bird than I did the other one. go and then I'm going to add a little bit more of the yellow or stoked which is you know it's a fluorescent so the, the colours are layering on top of each other rather nicely you know you need to make sure that they layer not blend because you don't want to create mud okay I think we're happy with that. Now I can't see because there's something in my eye. Right, let's let's just lift this up. I always forget which piece of um, low tack tape I've used first, or which I've placed on first. I'll spend more time lifting the low tack tape than creating a quick project. There we go. It's just worth it because with me putting it direct onto the card, it just meant that I didn't. And we've got sort of our two beautiful birds just on there. And what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of text just to this. So I'm using my Bulb Gazette. Let's just remove some of that ink. And I'm going to use the Morning Mist like we did when I created them before. I'm just going to add a little bit of the text Oop. just just a little touch of the text just here and there just so that you can see that and then I'm going to cut out this one that was a little bit lighter you know that we created before just cut that out so this is just creating something from a few little scraps Just going to let me just have a look. Just see, that's it. Just you can have just the two if you wish. I'm just going to add my little bird here, like so. Let's 
grab there it is I couldn't think where it was just grab the little bird just before I do that just add a tiny bit of cotton just to add a little bit of texture so that those beards are in the background those are in the background right and then I just want to add a little bit of subtlety very subtle so I'm going to use the long one Tracy the twisting and turning I've pulled the wrong stencil out because that's me all over Not that one, is it? Not that one. It is that one. And what I want to do now is work very delicately. I'm just going to work very delicately. Now, it's up to you. If you've got your brushes, a lot of people feel that they can work more delicately with a brush. I don't find that it's any different because I just place less pressure. That's it. Um, so let's just move these up. I'm just going to add a little bit of the stenciling, just a little tiny touch. So what I'm going to do is pick up some of the picked raspberry. And I still, even though I'm only going to go lightly, I still pick up plenty of ink on the cotton dry foam. What I'm going to do is just, just touch the stencil. Just touch that lightly. You don't need to go very heavily. And all you need to do is just go very lightly, but you're blending the colour so you're working it okay and then i'm going to add a little bit of wilted violet a little bit of the wilted violet just a little touch maybe a little bit more of the wilted violet just so it's got a little bit of a touch my cotton is going everywhere just to give a little bit of that and then a little tiny touch just here just on the corner okay let's leave that there you only want a little tiny touch dump that with the rest of the stuff and then I'm going to add some second generation stamping so just first stamping second generation stamping just there that's enough then just some splatters of white splatters of white and then I just want a word so let's move this out of the way I can't see anything. let's move all these out of the way what word we get weird we're joking aren't you I can't see anything here right there's some nice words in here there is beauty in simplicity create your own story let your dreams blossom 
There is beauty in simplicity. And isn't there just? Right, so we'll just take that. Add this to our card. Work on the straight edge, just makes it a little bit easier for cutting out. Just cut that. And you're going to have to see me add it to a card blank because I just think that will make it. There we go. So we'll just add the black edge. Like so. That's it. Just to make that pop a little bit more and then let's just clean that mess up. There we go. Just a little bit of drying. Make sure my hands are clean. Just grab my adhesive. And then I'm just going to mat and layer those. So that was three and a half by seven. So let's see if we've got a piece of black card. I've got that many colours out. Let's grab a piece of black card. So that's three and a three quarters by seven and a quarter. our black mat and a card that is four inches by seven and a half. So your card blank then becomes four inches by seven and a half. So let's add these to our mats. Just like so. Just add that. There. Black matte just sort of finishes it off. And let's add that to the white card blank. And all as that's been made from is little bits of ink and leftovers nothing nothing more let's add that to a white card blank and you started a card or i started a card with the objective of creating one card and this is why inspiration always takes you on a different tangent because i never planned on creating the other card as well. So we've gone, we've gone from creating that in the Facebook Live to creating that to creating that. And that's where inspiration takes you. So if nothing else, I hope you enjoyed the process, spending a little time together, and I hope you can find some time to be creative. Love to all and I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.